When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. All the good times just begun. Day two of our trip took us 565 kilometers through northern Quebec to the town of Fermont. Are you gonna check the old bath? Oh, I'll give you a minute to let yours warm up. One hell of a spot. Nothing laying around. We're good to go. We hit the road early, and our first stop was 300 meters away to check out the waterfall we got to listen to all night. After a short stop, we continued to Route 389, retracing our path from the night before. Uh, I could spend a whole week here. Sand, I can hate sand. Ah, Quebec construction. May as well shut her off. We're on the road. You can see where they're, they're ripping up the old road too. They're not just leaving it. Oh, it's over there, was it? Yeah, yeah, well, and that that's the old road. Be nice if they had left it. Well, too many probably probably since I've been in the woods so many times. And <laughs> drivers get killed. Now, now, brother, be careful with your biased opinions on particular trucking companies. It may come back to haunt us later. So this first section of the 389 has had some extensive work done to it, which continues in order to straighten it out a little for the heavy transport truck traffic. And despite the highway feel, this section still offers amazing scenery and it was only about 10 kilometers before we reached our next stop, the Manic Toot. Damn! Peanut butter and jam! Leaving Manic 2, we discovered that Route 389 quickly turns into its old self, full of twists and turns, rivers, lakes, and valley views, an absolute joy to ride. As much as I want to go see this dam, I kind of feel bad leaving that road. Holy crap, that's awesome. We'll be back on it. Yeah, yeah, we'll be back on it, but man. Now that will be back on it comment may have been a bit of foreshadowing. I created this route using Google and Gaia, and I wasn't sure how up to date that info was. Where am I taking us? Apparently the answer to that question is not very. Whether this is where I intended to be or not, it's as far as I'm going. So that's the trail we were on. Up there is where it's supposed to go. And it's gone. So we had to turn around, but backtracking wasn't so bad as it gave us time to see some things that we may have missed on the way in. And going around the opposite side of this hill offered a landscape that we would have missed completely had we not been forced to turn around. Oh, yeah. I have to get a picture of that. With the... Yeah, yeah. I was worried a few weeks ago if we could get through, because the road was closed. Well, it was a forest. Well, at one point, yeah. And it's gone. So with a feeling of sadness for the devastation left by raging forest fires, but relief that they were no longer burning, we continued on to Manic 3. And I apologize, I can't go to a dam without the following going through my head. Damn! Peanut butter and jam! And I understand that those two clips are completely unrelated to each other, but hey, that's ADHD for you. And after about an hour on this glorious road, we found a gas station. Seriously, whenever you see a gas station, fill up because they're few and far between. And I was able to put my sticker next to that of one of my favorite YouTube channels, P.O. Trek. 
He was a huge inspiration for me to start making my own videos, so check him out. Now that is the look of approval if I ever saw one. Oh, he gets pretty even higher wear on that road. Yeah, yeah, that's just pretty straight down further than I am. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a fair much work. There's also a restaurant here if that's your thing. But we stuck with what became a staple roadside meal for us of Gatorade, beef jerky, and chocolate bars while we recounted our experience of the day so far. Just north of the gas station is a dirt road to the left that takes you up a hill, where there is a lookout to view the Daniel Johnson Dam, also known as Manic 5. This thing is impressive, and we both made the stereotypical comment of, pictures just don't do it justice, while proceeding to take pictures. Damn! Peanut butter and jam! After leaving the viewpoint, we came across a typical Trans-Labrador adventure traffic jam, which, for the uninitiated, is a few motorcyclists lining up to take pictures for their personal collection of My Bike Parked in Front of Things, followed by a discussion with other travelers about their plans. We'll wait our turn. La place pour prendre une photo. Oui, oui. <laughs> uh, Nouveau Brunswick, uh, Nevada Coast. Okay. You going till uh, Blanc Sablon? Eventually, yeah. Tonight we're getting to Vermont. We don't know where to go. But there's a there's a free place in Vermont that's right by a lake. The town lets you camp there. Oh, yeah? That's our goal. But it's 360 kilometers and it's already two o'clock, so we'll see. So it will take three hours and a half, maybe. Uh, at least I'll probably we won't we won't be going a hundred. You think we're going to La Vallée? Oh yeah, really? That's that's close. Put some gas. Yeah. And we'll find the place to stay over there. Look up uh, Station Upaska. It's a research station. You can rent a cabin, but they'll let you tent there too. Thanks for the tip. Bonne journée. Hey. Bonne journée. Bye. That's fucking huge. <laughs> what? What is that thing going all the way up? Don't know. From pictures, it looks like a fucking ski jump, but <laughs> I'm I'm sure that's not what it is. So just after crossing the overflow gates, the road turns to dirt, and I think this was karma for that trucking comment my brother made earlier. We got stuck behind some trucks going slightly over 50, creating blinding conditions. When we were finally able to safely pass, the lead truck began tailgating us at about 100, which was less than ideal. I was pretty happy to see the Manicougan Reservoir to pull over. I just need a fucking break. You get down there on that roadway? It's up to you. Should be able to. All right, how much point looking at it from here? No, we'll go down. Short inseam problems in three, two, one. Up, up. Ah, fuck. One, two, three, go! Do you anything? No, no, just my pride. While it always sucks to drop a bike, honestly, it was no worse for the wear. And I was able to dip my feet in the eye of Quebec. Worth it. Leaving the reservoir lookout, we put the hammer down to make up some time. The road turns to pavement just as you get to Relay Gabrielle, and we made a short stop for fuel, deciding to eat now instead of waiting to get to Fermont. This way we could just stop and sleep somewhere quickly if we needed to. 
The burgers were greasy, but damn, they were good. Now, pushing north, the road is not as twisty as it was south of Manic 5, but the views are amazing, and after about 45 minutes, in the middle of nowhere, curbs and sidewalks appeared. Sidewalk. This was once the town of Gagnon. When the nearby mine dried up in the 1980s, the town was abandoned and all the buildings were removed. These curbs, a few plaques, and a flag are all that remains. Ah! Let's go read a plaque, shall we? Then we'll figure out what we're doing. We considered camping at the Gagnon ghost town, but it sounded a lot cooler than it was, so we hit the road again hoping to avoid what looked like looming rain clouds. The last 65 kilometers into Mont Wright were twisty dirt roads with lots of railway crossings. Now while it would have been cool to see one of the trains at a crossing, we were lucky to not have been held up by one. As it was, we got to our destination just after the sun set with just enough twilight to set up our tents and go straight to sleep. Thankful for the greasy burgers we had earlier at Relay Gabrielle. It was a long day. A new place, a new home, for a while, let me feel alive. Nothing to hold me back, take my time, just enjoy the ride. I know man passing by, life is good, best I've ever felt. 